Hey guys, Tyler from TGK Motorsport here. On today's video, we're gonna be going over the install instructions for our blow-off valve conversion for the 4.0T platform. We made a revision on the blow-off valve and we're just gonna cut it in. There is one just design change that we did, which makes the install a hair different for the new piece. So if you have the old piece, the install is gonna be the same as it normally is, but we are gonna basically tell you how to install the new one. Now, the reason for the change was, as we come to find out when we had the map sensor on where it was on the original one, depending on the intakes that you had, some hit, some don't. So we just completely moved the map sensor. Now that's literally the only change. So the map sensor just flipped to the opposite side. And then all you have to do for the install instructions is literally flip the harness 180 degrees, plug it in the same exact way, everything mounts up and that's literally it. So our kit is gonna include everything that you need for the install. It's gonna come with the cast section piece. It's gonna come with a blow off valve, the reference line to convert it so you have boost reference, boost vacuum reference. It's gonna come with all the mounting hardware for the blow off valve. It's gonna come with caps for the intake because you remove the research, so you have to cap them so your intake is sealed off. The map sensor conversion harness and then obviously the resistors to remove any errors from deleting the diverter valves. Now there is some OEM parts or parts on your car that you're gonna reuse. Uh, there is seals that go on the bottom of the blow-off valve to mount it to the throttle body. You'll just reuse the ones that are on diverters they pick right up. And then obviously your map sensor, instead of two map sensors, you're gonna have one and then you're just gonna plug one of them in there and then the other one you just do whatever you wanna do with it. Now, one of the main reasons that someone might convert to this is if you have a leaky diverter valve, uh, the electronic ones are no known to leak, um, you'll, or if you have air codes for the diverter valves, this just eliminates it. It uses a boost and vacuum reference to hold the uh, blow off valve closed. When you let off the throttle, the deviation of, from boost from before throttle body and after will, will force the blow off valve to open and the air will escape. Traditionally, basically what they do on all the other applications that do not have uh, electronic diverter valve. The tools that you need for the installation, you don't need very many of them, is a T30 Torx, an Allen to tighten the clamp for the blow off valve, some pliers to remove the clamps for the hoses that are on there, and then just depending on the clamps for your intake, either a flathead or a Phillips screwdriver, it depends on your hose clamps. Uh, the hose clamps that I send with are Phillips, so you're gonna need a Phillips for that one. First thing what we're gonna do is we are going to remove all the bolts to remove the diverter valves. It is a T30 Torx. After you remove all the bolts, I'm gonna remove the harness for the sensors. And then also the, these have aftermarket diverter valves on them. I'm gonna unplug the diverter valves. Nice little trick is just to stick a flathead down. Now we need to remove the hose over here. This one has a Phillips. Depending on how stuck the silicone is, you can just kind of just take a pick, just walk it around to free it up. Just like so. You'll remove the hose clamp and then you'll set that aside. You need to disconnect the diverter. Then you can snake this out. Now that that diverter is removed, you can set this aside. For this side, you're gonna do the same exact thing. Remove the map sensor, disconnect the diverter, get the hose off, and then pull this out. This is the boost reference hose that we are going to be tapping. Now, a lot of people, when they put in like a Mac valve for like pressure gates, they'll cut the hose and T in here. We built the hose to automatically have that already built in for a reference to not have to have all these clamps. So you're gonna remove these with the pliers and a 10 millimeter. There's one here with the 10 millimeters on the side and then the clamp that's underneath the intake. We'll be removing the, the tip section of the intake just for easier access in the video. Uh, depending on your intake, it might be different. Gonna be a 10 millimeter you're just gonna remove the hose clamp it is a stud now with the hose clamp removed it might be easier just just be careful not to break this plastic line to move it over depending on your intake that you have on your car 
it might allow for more room for you to get to the hose clamp with the pliers. We are gonna use a needle nose pliers just to get it off so we can remove this line. So obviously we removed the hose. We are gonna reuse these two hose clamps. So you'll transfer the two hose clamps over to the new one. Now that everything is removed from the car, we are going to pre-assemble everything on the table. You're gonna take the hose clamps. Obviously the hose clamps are gonna come off. So I'm gonna go and put this back on. You're gonna reuse that. You can use the supplied hose clamp to tighten this to the pull-off valve. What's gonna do is it's just gonna sit in here and then you'll just clamp it tight. Now we're gonna assemble the pull-off valve cast section. What you're gonna to need to do is take the OEM gasket, peel it out, transfer it over. To there, so it provides a seal. Do the same thing over here. Now we need to take a map sensor. It doesn't matter which one. Is a T30. Now that you got your map sensor, your map sensor is gonna go away from the two holes just because you will not be able to plug it in because of the charge assembly. Go it in. Obviously do your two, two bolts. That part is assembled. Now we're gonna have to install this. There is a gasket that comes with the, uh, the blow off valve. You know, just set the gasket in there. And then this is going to be assembled like so. You might have to clock orientation. The blow off valve itself is gonna come with a port and then it's gonna come with a block off. You have to install both. If you leave one port open, it will leak vacuum out. It's gonna go like this. What I found the easiest way to do it is take your clamp. You're gonna put your clamp on. Then once you have your clamp on the section, I just make sure your clamp is open enough you can kind of spread it. Slide that section on there. Now obviously the clamp is holding both on. You'll just use your Allen. Until it's tight. Now it shouldn't move or rotate at all. So we set the clamp so you can't see it when it's installed in the car. Once it's on the car, I'll adjust this a little bit and I'll keep it nice and hidden. So like a good starting point for the blow off valve is to have it kind of pointed, like if it's flat, kind of have it pointed out because the hose, the hose is gonna have to go like this. And then once we're, it's installed in the car, we will orientate it where its final resting location is gonna be and then we'll just tighten it with the Allen. Now that we have the blow off valve essentially assembled, this is what it's gonna look like, we need to go and install the hose. Uh, you will have to put, obviously, the hose clamp on, but let's get the hose on first, then you put the hose clamp on. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna, the hose, here's the top that is going on the blow off valve. So obviously this hose goes in here, push it all the way. You're gonna do the same for underneath here. Gonna take the hose clamp again, hose clamp around. You're gonna take your stud. Now that this is installed, we gotta install the caps that cover the intake ports. So you're gonna use the two caps and put them on here and then use the supplied hose clamps to tighten them down. So you're gonna use the supplied hardware that we have for the 
mounted on here. It's just four screws. It's gonna be very tight because there really is no clearance to make the most of the space. So take your time installing this. If you have any relocation kit, you might have to, depending on your intake system and all that other stuff, you might have to shove it over while you're installing this. If you're doing that, I would advise having another person help you so you don't strip out the threads on here while you're installing. If you do not have a relocation kit, everything works perfectly fine. Now after you have this installed, we're gonna be using the supplied clamp, just attaching the hose. Now this is still loose, so we are just gonna orientate it so it is in the best space of travel. Tighten it. What you're gonna do is you're gonna clock the blow off valve so the hose is not kinked at all. So like right on this case, it is a perfect straight, perfect elbow. This is where it's gonna be at. Then you're gonna take your Allen and you are gonna tighten this up in position. Now that we have this installed, we're gonna install our jumper harness. What you're gonna do is you're gonna plug the, the male end, the single male end. The revised version, the two ends of the harness will be on the driver's side versus the first version, they were on the passenger side. Into the map sensor over here. How I routed it is I just sneak it down there, sneak it through. The female end is gonna go through. Connect to your map sensor here. Plug in. This end is gonna go to your map sensor plug over here. I kind of just don't make sure that your harness doesn't fall down and hit the exhaust. I just kind of, you can route it however you want for your car. So like this one, you can just snake it like this. Kind of hide this in here. Now you have your two diverter valves. You're gonna use our resistors and plug those in. So you're gonna plug them in like so. And then you can just kind of hide this wherever as well. Get it out of the way. So we will be sending studs. If you wanna run the engine cover, they are gonna space the engine cover up. You're gonna, you probably will have to adjust it for yours for maximum clearance for both front sides. The rears obviously are not where the issue is. There is a V that is inside your engine cover that will come in contact with the crossover pipe. If you do not run an engine cover at all, like a lot of people don't, you don't have to worry about it. We're just gonna send the studs for the people that do wanna run the engine cover. Cool. After you do the install, start your car. When it's idling, verify that this is not open. There's different spring rates that you can do for the blow off valve to accommodate for the amount of vacuum that is in the system itself. If the vacuum is stronger than the spring, it will be open a little bit. And if it is getting contact, we can figure out the correct spring rate from your vacuum on your car. Every one that we've tested on so far has been with the factory spring rate with the blow off valve that we send you. But if you do run into issue, please get in contact immediately. Now I'm gonna go over something that you might have to do depending on your location and how your blow off valve reacts. Now, if, if you start your car and you're idling and your blow off valve itself is sitting here and dancing, that means that the spring rate is just a hair too small that it can't hold the gate closed at idle, which essentially means your car has more vacuum. Every car is different, whatever modifications you have, if something's using vacuum more, it just really ultimately depends on your car. Now, some cars, you don't have to worry about it. Some cars, if it gets cold, some cars when it's hot, if you have a dancing blow off valve, you need to add another spring. Now we are gonna send along a spare spring just to everyone, cause you never know. And we're gonna basically go over how to change this. All you need is a vise or something to clamp the blow off valve down to relieve spring pressure. Now we're gonna use a vise. What you essentially wanna do is you wanna put your blow off valve in a vise. I would use foam or something to not mar up the ends. Doesn't take much. You just literally have to tighten it. It's like there and you're good. Now you can get a spanner wrench. A way that I normally do it is I just take a flathead 
put it in the in the track and just Now, once the collar is fully loose, that's when you can release the pressure. You have to do this while it's compressed. You will strip these out unless you compress it. Ask me how I know. Then you can just kind of just grab it. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the two springs and you're gonna merge them. The best way to do it, literally just shove it into it itself or go like this. So basically these two springs have to stack and now we just up the spring rate and then assembly, literally the same exact thing. Now, there are grooves that are in the housing of itself on this turbo smart blow off valve. So the housing, like the hat, has to sit in the grooves. So when you're putting this back together, make sure that it is in the grooves before you tighten it. Because again, you cannot strip these out. Literally do that. I found my best way that I've done this is I literally just push it down by hand. Till the cap goes in. Start the threads just so they're started. Now, once you have that, you can put it back in your vise. Do it so you don't mar it up. And then just tap it closed again. stops like that. Essentially all you're gonna do is you're gonna do it until it's tight. Do not over tighten it because of the threads again. You're basically gonna go and then once this, if this starts spinning in your vise, then you know you essentially have it all the way tight. 